Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Right, now let us look at the difference of the atmospheric pressure. Now we will look at only that situation where maybe at the same altitude the ambient pressure is not equal to the standard value. So let us recall from our uh, previous uh, slides. Now unless you read them up regularly, you will not be able to appreciate. Okay? But I cannot do much about it. It is your job to go back home and look at these slides and get familiar. So, just for you to recall, the gross lift of the envelope, uh, basically we derived in the class that it is equal to the static pressure P, the total pressure P s at the altitude minus 1 minus R d w v times E, where R d w v is the relative density of the water vapor, correct, right. And E is the humidity okay so how do you how do you estimate uh, humidity rh by, huh. rh by 100 correct so the value of e is rh by 100 and this particular term on the numerator which is subtracting from ps is the effect of relative humidity okay we saw that the effect was around 1.6 to 2% but still for completeness we want to leave the term there uh, into K V upon T A, what is the value of, what is T A? It is the ambient air temperature and what is K, what is V? So, V is the envelope volume and K? K is the constant which was rho 0, P 0, T 0 by rho 0 I think and the value of that is 0 0.0. Yeah, point zero. See, the value of pi is three point one four one six. This value is point zero three four one six, something like that. Okay, so it's a constant. It's a constant k because it only involves rho zero, t zero, p zero, which are constant values. Now, if you ignore the value of e, or let's say put e equal to zero, then the numerator will have only the p s term. So we'll have a simple expression. And now, if I take two conditions, condition 1, condition 2 or uh, from operating condition 1 to condition 2, I want to see if the P s changes from P s 1 to P s 2, what will be the change in the gross lift or L g. So from the simple, uh, from the expression above, you can always work out that if I do L g at 1 equal to P s 1 minus this into K V upon T A 1 and L g 2 is equal to P s 2 minus the humidity term times K V by T A 2. Now the T A 2 and T A 1 are same here because the only thing changing is the pressure. We are assuming that everything else remains constant, only the pressure changes. So delta L g, delta L g will be, this is not correct, it should be delta L g. So the change in LG will be PS2 minus PS1 into KV by TA, fine, okay. Now we also want to recall that the weight of air in the balloon, it was obtained using a very similar expression as PS plus delta PSP which is super pressure minus the humidity effect upon TA plus TSH which is the superheat effect. Now we use 1 minus I because the air in the balloon or the gas balloon volume is 1 minus I times V. Okay. So just like we do the calculation for the lifting gas, the same calculations we do also for the balloon. Only thing is this is a complete expression which, which also has the super pressure and the superheat effect. Suppose we again ignore humidity because it is only 1.6 percent or so. So you will get a simple expression by knocking off uh, this term in the numerator and now WBA2 minus WBA1 will be the difference in the balloon air weight. 
So, in this in this expression you first put P s is equal to P s 1 and then you put P s is equal to P s 2 and in the first case it will be 1 minus i 1 and then it will become 1 minus i 2. Recall that the inflation fraction will change even though we are changing only P s, but the effect of that is also to change the inflation fraction. The moment air in the balloon is expelled or taken, the inflation fraction cannot remain the same. So, the difference of the two expressions will give you the expression for WBA2 minus WBA1. So, going from a condition when the pressure is PS1 to a condition when pressure is PS2, everything else remaining same. We have one expression for LG that is the delta LG lifting um, gross lift increment and we have one expression for the change in the balloon air. So, essentially if you look at net lift, so I am just copying and pasting it here and now we can simplify this. Now, how do we simplify this? If you see in the numerator you have delta PSP in both the terms and there is a minus sign in between. So, if you expand this you will get PS2 minus I2 into PS2 plus delta P s p minus i t into delta P s p and the same thing for the second term and if you then and the, the, the denominator is the same. So, you can take it common and then you can subtract the terms. So, doing that so, I have just done it for you I have just expanded the whole term for you ok. Those of you who are looking at me and nodding your head you will really regret this it is better that you write down what I am doing. Because when it comes back, when you when you when you come to the uh, calculations, at that time you will not have the slides in front of you. You will get the finished product, which you can understand only if you have done these calculations. Okay. It is only for ease in communication that we are using the PowerPoint. Otherwise, we are actually supposed to do these derivations ourselves. Hmm. If you wish, I can do it in front of you here, if it helps. But it's it's already there on the screen, so it's better that you do it. So, you do it yourself and then check whether you get the same expression. If not, you have to check or if there is some mistake here, you have to tell me. So, what I have done here is the terms which contain I1 and I2, I have clubbed them together and the terms which are independent of I1 and I2, I have put them in the first bracket and the denominator is the same. So, it becomes it, it remains common. Okay, shall we go ahead? All right. Now, notice that we have two terms in the in the numerator. One of them has P s 2 plus delta P s p with I 2 the other one has P s 1 plus delta P s p with I 1. So, if you recall very in the last few slides I have shown you one uh, expression between I 2 and I 1 which related the pressures and temperatures. Okay. So, what we can do is we can use that expression and by that you can actually eliminate what you will find is that this term P s 2 plus delta P into I 2 will be equal to P s 1 plus delta P s p into I 1 because I 2 by I 1 is equal to P s 1 plus delta P s p dip upon P s 2 plus delta P s p. So, now this particular term has a negative sign this has a positive sign and both these terms are actually equal. So, quite simply they will get knocked off. So, here it is recall that I 2 upon I 1 is equal to P s 1 plus delta P s 1 upon P s 2 plus delta P s 2 delta S p 2 and similarly for the temperatures and we are only assuming here that there is a change in P s everything else is not changing. So, therefore, if you if you assume that P a 2 is equal to T a 1 because there is no temperature change. If you assume that the superheat at 2 and 1 are same because we are not assuming any superheat change and if you also assume that the super pressure also remains the same. The only thing that changes is P s 1 and P s 2. So, when you do that 
you can easily see that the term on the right side here will become equal because these two will be equal and these two will be equal so they will knock off. So this will knock off and become 1 and you will get I2 by I1 is equal to PS1 plus delta PSP no need to put 1 or 2. Similarly, PS2 plus delta PSP and with that this I2 into this is equal to I1 into this and that if you put there you will get a very simple expression because the inflation fraction terms will simply cancel each other. So, once that happens the difference in the balloon air weight is nothing but difference in the ambient pressures divided by the temperature plus superheat times K into V. This expression is very similar to what we got for the gross lift. For the gross lift if you recall we got a similar expression that the gross lift change is equal to PS2 minus PS1 upon Ta Kv. The only difference is that there is no superheat considered here and here superheat comes into play. Okay. So, now the change in the net static lift and that is what our whole capsule is about. This whole chapter is about change in the static lift because of change in the parameters. That is equal to the difference in the gross lift minus difference in the balloon air weight. Is this point clear? Because this will come every time. Essentially in a system the gross lift is equal to weight of the air displaced and the net lift is weight of the air uh, gross lift minus the weight of the balloon A, weight of the air in the balloon A, okay and the lifting gas weight itself. So, the delta N will be the net gross, net gross lift that will be equal to the sorry the, the net lift and that will be equal to the difference in the gross lift minus difference in the balloon air weight. For Lg2 minus Lg1 we have an expression which is PS2 minus PS1 Kv upon Ta and for WBA2 WBA1 we have an expression right above it that is PS2 minus PS1 Ta plus delta TSH Kv. When you put them together you will get a simple expression in which you can actually take out PS2 minus PS1 common in the numerator. So, uh, in the case of uh, lifting gas we have 1 by Ta in the case of balloon net we have 1 by Ta plus TSH. So, therefore, by simplification further you can have this numerator you can say Ta plus TSH minus Ta upon this uh, and you know you can easily get this particular expression. So, delta N can be easily calculated. Is there something missing here? <coughs> ah, I also observed just now that the Ta term is missing. This should actually be PS2 minus PS1 upon Ta delta TSH upon Ta plus TSH Kv. So, this I will be correcting when I upload this. The Ta term because if you take the denominators there are two different values. So, when you do the subtraction it will uh, become like that. So, what do we learn from here? Then the change in the net lift when you simply provide higher pressure that is now where is the pressure changing? This P s change takes place where? This is in the atmosphere correct. So, when you operate from any condition where P s is equal to P s 2 compared to when your pressure was P s 1 there is a change in the net lift and that lift is that change is simply the difference between the pressures times the ratio of superheat upon Ta plus TSH into K into V. Okay. Now, if you assume that there is no superheat, okay. if you assume that there is no superheat, then you find that net lift change is 0 because it will subtract 1 upon Ta minus 1 upon Ta. Okay. So, this is an interesting observation that if, if just the pressure is changed without any super pressure, okay, without any without any superheat sorry, with no superheat, then there is no change. So, just by changing ambient pressure and keeping everything else constant including superheat, 
net lift change is zero. 